Hey there, this is The One Boom, and today we're going to be talking about the new map and perk rebalancing in Vanguard's multiplayer. Now, there's a lot that changed in the patch notes, and I could read them all, but that's an insult to your ability to read. I mean, why listen to me tell you them when you could just go read them? No, this is an opinion channel. We don't do things that matter. All right, so this is kind of exciting because similarly to their last big change, which was changing how combat pacing works, this is also something I've wanted for a very long time. Like, since this game came out, this has been one of my most requested things for them to do, and I am so happy that they've done it. Let me be real for a second. I had three big things I wanted tweaked about Vanguard, and that was its spawns, its combat pacing, and its perk balance. And while none of it has been perfect, they have tackled those three topics, so that's kind of cool for me as a content creator, knowing that maybe my judgment wasn't being pulled completely out of my ass if the developers saw the same problem I did. And also, just as somebody who wants to enjoy the game more, I mean, it's nice to just see the things that I would have done be done, so yeah. So what did they do to the perks? They took Overkill from Tier 3 and put it in Tier 1. Then they took Ninja and Survival Training from Tier 1 and put them in Tier 3. Meaning you can now run Ghost and Ninja, Cold-Blooded and Ninja. You can also run Survival Training and Fortified now, because Keep in mind, and people told me I was silly for complaining about this, but Vanguard's the only Call of Duty I've, I think I've played that doesn't let you combine the Tac Mask and Flak Jacket equivalent perks. But now you can have Fortified and Survival Training, which is fantastic. And you can also have Dauntless and Survival Training, which is even better. Being able to run Cold-Blooded and Ninja or Ghost and Ninja is fantastic because now we can make stealth classes. And with Survival Training and Fortified, we can make resistance classes for playing the objective and being aggressive. This is fantastic. This is what I've wanted them to do. Also, the fact that you have to give up Dauntless, Fortified, uh, Ghost, or Cold-Blooded to run Overkill means we should, theoretically, see a lot less Turtles going around. Now, apparently there's a bug where some people's classes are letting them have Overkill in Tier 3 still, so it's screwing everything up and people have Riot Shields on their back for free, but that's a bug. It'll get fixed. They also did something I really wanted them to do. They nerfed Piercing Vision. I, I hate Piercing Vision. I don't like the fact that you can get wall hacks on somebody for missing. But they increased the amount of suppression required to highlight the targets, and they decreased the visibility of highlighted targets. And that's good. I didn't like that when somebody was using Piercing Vision with like an SMG, they just shoot at you for like two or three bullets, and they get a little highlight of you, and that, that would allow them to see what you're doing around the corner you just ducked behind. And, Again, I hate the perk in general. I hate that Dauntless sort of became a crutch perk for me because I just hate the concept of being wall hacked. But hey, now I can run Dauntless and Ninja, so that's kind of neat. But either way, Piercing Vision has been apparently nerfed, and I don't know, in my opinion, Piercing Vision should be a weapon perk on a couple of LMGs, if anything, not a just, just not just a perk you can put on. Um, but I'm a little sad that the Intel line of perks didn't get tweaked a little bit. I know the whole thing is that it's the Intel tier, but I, I don't like that there's a whole tier dedicated to one type of perk. It doesn't make any sense for this kind of game with a three perk system. I kind of think it would have been cool if Piercing Vision and Cold-Blooded traded spots. So basically tier one's Cold-Blooded goes into tier two and tier two's Piercing Vision goes into tier one. That could have been nice, something like that to just sort of discourage people using Piercing Vision, give them more things to consider when equipping it. And then I could run my favorite thing that I've wanted to run since the game came out, Ghost, Cold-Blooded, and Ninja, and just be a stealthy little bitch. Now, let's talk about Ninja being uh, much more viable now. The fact that you can put it in Tier 3 means a lot of people are going to gravitate towards it, and even though you have to give up Double Time or Lightweight or Tactician and Demolition, having passively silent footsteps is a really powerful tool. And already, with my game volume cranked on the stream that I was getting this gameplay, I found myself being a little frustrated with how many people were just sprinting up to me and killing me, and I felt like I should have known they were coming, and there was no way for me to know they were coming. I know there's a hot topic about camping and ninja being a perk or whatever, but look, I do think everybody running around with ninja is going to be annoying. It's going to have its annoyances, because then people don't have to be cautious in close range, which I guess you might say is good, because Call of Duty is all about speed, but Call of Duty isn't always about speed, and uh, in fact, I have a video I'm writing right now uh, proving that Call of Duty is not about speed, it's about motivation. But either way, I don't have a solution for this, I just think that it's going to have pros and cons. We get to be more aggressive and stealthy, but also it's going to be annoying when everybody's aggressive and stealthy, I think. 
By the way, subscribe if you like the idea of that Call of Duty Speed video, because it's going to be a lot like uh, the Why Was Old Cod More Fun and Less Sweaty video that I did that a lot of you guys seem to enjoy. So the other thing they added in this update is a map Sphere. And this is interesting. It's a smaller map that I actually kind of like. It's weird. A lot of the sight lines are closed off except for about two. It's very basic in its design, but also kind of intricate, and I enjoy it. Its whole aesthetic is very clean, well lit. I didn't really have any visibility issues except maybe in the middle bunker area. Either way, it's a pretty good map. It's a lot like if Shoot House had a weird baby with a map that's not like Shoot House at all. Subscribe for more winning commentary. The weirdest thing about this map is that the main power position is underground in the middle, other than the two campier lanes on each side, which is normal on a three lane map like this, but like it feels like the main central point will be the bottom middle, because that gives you access to either spawn, and because the spawns are much stickier now in Vanguard, you can essentially get infinite flanks going if you own that bottom middle, and that's kind of fun, I guess. It's, it's something unique. I, th I think it's... Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's something unique for the roster of maps, and I feel like that's safe to say for Mayhem and Sphere here. So, honestly, Season 3's multiplayer maps, while they're not my cup of tea usually, I don't hate either of them, and visually they're both very nice. I would have liked to have seen three maps or something, but last season we got Casablanca, I believe is the name or whatever it's called, and then Gondola, and okay, that's fine, those were two larger, more complicated maps, so I will give that a break. But I'd like a mix next season. I'd like a large map and a small map, maybe two small maps and one large map, something like that. But this is fine, it's all right. Uh, and then the last thing I need to mention here is that they did add a new SMG that I, I don't know when I'm gonna unlock it. You have to get three slide kills in 15 matches. My God, I, I don't understand why they keep doing this. I mean, I know why they do it, but I don't understand how they keep getting away with it, I guess is the better point to make. They just keep making these challenges where I have to go complete 15 games. That's really what it means. Because it's not hard to get three slide kills, especially with a shotgun, in a game. They don't care that it's, that it's not challenging, though. They just want to make sure I play 15 more games than I normally would, then get the gun, and then spend a ton of games leveling it up to level 70. And that sort of player retention technique is admirable. You know, I do a challenge, I get a new gun, I want a new gun as a player, and I like leveling up guns. But god, it's just gonna feel really fatiguing by the time this game is over. I, I, might, I might honestly just take a long break from Call of Duty before Modern Warfare 2 comes out, so that I'm not burnt on leveling up guns when my most anticipated Call of Duty comes out at the end of this year. But anyway, that's it. Subscribe for some more Battlefield Halo and Call of Duty content. I'm going to be talking about those games. I want to revisit Insurgency Sandstorm. And I might even make a video responding to some of the comments on my Arma Reforger review. Because a lot of people missed the goddamn point of that video. And oh god, when that happens, I just have to say something back. So either way, let me know what you want from the channel. And subscribe for more. And I live stream here. And if you're still sitting here, you must just be across the room doing something else. And you're reaching now to turn me off. All right, well, goodbye.